Hey everybody, welcome to Bible class. We've got one chapter today, Acts chapter 15. I'm anxious to dig in with you. Last Sunday, we were with Paul and Barnabas on what is commonly referred to as that first missionary journey, right? It started up here in Antioch. It ended in Antioch. It went far into the territory of the Gentiles, people who were not descendants of Abraham. And in Acts 15, after Paul and Barnabas have been home for a while, some men came down from Judea. They came from Jerusalem over here to Antioch, and they were teaching the brothers there in Antioch, unless you are circumcised according to the custom of Moses, you cannot be saved. Was that true? No, that wasn't true. That's not what Paul and Barnabas had carried as good news about Jesus into Gentile territory. People who weren't descendants of Moses didn't have to do that in order to be right with God. What they did need to do was believe that Jesus was the Christ, the Son of the living God. They needed to turn away from their sins and be buried with Jesus in baptism so that they could be raised to walk in newness of life. God had never told people this is what I want you to carry to the ends of the earth. This was not true. Paul and Barnabas knew it wasn't true. And so they contend with these brothers. Eventually, there are those who decide in Antioch, we need to go down to Jerusalem, down to the source of this misinformation and try and get everybody on the same page. That's what Acts 15 is all about. In verse 4, when they came to Jerusalem, Paul and Barnabas and others from Antioch, they were welcomed by the church and the apostles and the elders, and they declared, Paul and Barnabas declared, all that God had done with them. But, Luke tells us, some believers who belonged to the party of the Pharisees rose up and said, it is necessary to circumcise them, the Gentiles, and to order them to keep the law of Moses. That leads to a great deal of debate. There are the apostles and the elders in Jerusalem who are all gathered together. And while this debate in Jerusalem is going on, Peter, the apostle, stands up and addresses the whole crowd. Now, why is what he has to say important? Well, remember, Peter, yes, had been here in Jerusalem. We charted him in Acts chapter 9 all the way over here to Joppa, where eventually in Acts chapter 10, there was a Roman centurion who lived up here in Caesarea. Do you remember his name? He was Cornelius. Cornelius was told to send for a man named Peter down in Joppa who would come up and tell him what he needed to do. Cornelius and his household, they were Gentiles, right? And while Peter is sharing the good news with them, the Holy Spirit fell upon them as proof that even Gentiles could be made right by the sacrifice of Jesus. They didn't have to keep the law of Moses. They didn't have to be circumcised. That was proof for Peter and those Jews. And Peter asked, can anyone withhold water from these people? Cornelius and his household back in Acts chapter 10 had been baptized in the name of Jesus for the forgiveness of their sins. That's what Peter reminds them of. In Acts 15, verse 7, Brothers, you know that in the early days God made a choice among you that by my mouth the Gentiles should hear the word of the gospel and believe. That's Acts 10. 
And God, who knows the heart, bore witness to them by giving them the Holy Spirit just as he did to us. And he made no distinction between us, the Jews, and them, the Gentiles, having cleansed their hearts by faith. Now, therefore, why are you putting God to the test by placing a yoke on the neck of the disciples that neither our fathers nor we have been able to bear? What do you think he meant by that? We'll talk about that together as a class. But we believe that we will be saved through the grace of the Lord Jesus, just as they will. That was needed information, right, from there. Paul and Barnabas tell the story of going into Gentile territory and how God continued to save people, not through the law of Moses, but through the grace of Jesus Christ. After they had finished speaking, James, in Acts 15, verse 13, the brother of Jesus, he replies, brothers, listen to me. Simeon, Simon Peter, has related how God first visited the Gentiles to take from them a people for his name. And with this, the words of the prophets agree, just as it is written. James is reaching back. Where does this come from? We'll discover that together as a class. For now, he's reaching back to an ancient prophecy. After this, I will return and I will rebuild the tent of David that has fallen. I will rebuild its ruins and I will restore it that the remnant of mankind may seek the Lord and all the Gentiles who are called by my name, says the Lord, who makes these things known from of old. We've got Peter telling the story of Cornelius, Paul and Barnabas telling the story of their missionary journey. Now James, the Lord's brother, quoting Old Testament prophecy, he says in verse 19, my judgment is that we should not trouble these of the Gentiles who turn to God, but should write to them to abstain from the things polluted by idols and from sexual immorality and from what has been strangled and from blood. For from ancient generations, Moses has had in every city those who proclaim him, for he is read every Sabbath in the synagogues. After a great deal of debate, a letter is written, Paul and Barnabas, even a man named Silas, come from Jerusalem back up to Antioch, they share this news, and there is great rejoicing. At the end of Acts 15, Paul and Barnabas talk together about making another missionary journey, and Paul wants to take with them John, John Mark, but Paul isn't sure about that because in the middle of the first missionary journey, John Mark had gone back home. Barnabas wants to continue to develop John Mark, and and there is such a sharp disagreement between Paul and Barnabas that Barnabas and John Mark go this way. Paul takes Silas and begins heading north. That is the beginning of that second missionary journey that we'll talk much more about, but for now, what do we need to learn from Acts 15? There's an awful lot, and so let's talk about it together. I so appreciate you being in class. Hope you have a great rest of your class and a great start to this new week.